We live in a world where we hear the words smart ship, connected ship, unmanned ship, automated ship, and we hear this discussion about the digital shipping world and a forecast of new shipping models. Obviously, we've been talking about it in the last hour and a half. It's a fast-moving world. And, and what I'd like to do is really sift through the, um, the, the hype and, and really come down to where, where we see it. And uh, from that perspective, when I look at it, shipping has many elements. We've been using this word shipping in the maritime industry uh, and banding it about. But if you break it down to shipping is logistics, it's cargo booking, it's trading, it's port control, it's chartering, it's container management, etc. But I don't think that's actually what most of us have been talking about. I think in this, in this area, it's important not to generalize. We, we need to identify what within the ecosystem we're actually talking about. I mean, everyone can be a visionary or a futurologist if they say that shipping is going to, to go digital. But in actual fact, shipping is already digital in many areas. Um, you, you can't but have noticed that Maersk has done a deal with Alibaba. You can't but have noticed that Amazon's coming into shipping. You can't but have noticed that we have ectases and digital charts and all of these aspects. It's, it's, it's my position that actually those things connected to the shore like containerization and logistics that have a much larger area in the financial equation are going to digitize much quicker. And in fact, they're happening much quicker. They're happening much quicker because they matter more. They cost more. There's bigger numbers involved. And we, we need to get used to the fact that actually that part which we call shipping, which is ship owning, is a niche part of shipping. We're very, we're very quick to talk about the fact that uh, we carry 90% of everything, and that's absolutely true. But those dollars and cents belong to the people that own the cargoes and move the cargoes. We are the 40,000 or the 50,000 ships. And 50,000 ships, there's more than 50,000 Uber cars in New York, for God's sake. We've, we've got to rationalize the fact that actually our part of the industry does not need to change as fast, or maybe it needs to change its model. Why, why are we a bit slower in the ship owning business? Maybe because crews are still cheap enough. Maybe because there is only 40,000 ships or 50,000 ships. Or maybe, as I've just said, we haven't provided the right model for ship owners and operators to convert to a digitized model. The question is, are you just expecting today's ship owners to suddenly embrace digi digitalization, or are we going to see a completely different model in ship owning or ship operating? So before we consider an unmanned ship or a connected ship, I think we need to look at that, the ecosystem and, and two other areas as well, communications and cybersecurity. For me, this, the ecosystem of ship operating is dysfunctional. We have vessel traffic systems that don't connect to the ship but merely monitor them. We have ships that operate in a vacuum. And we have fleet operations and communications between the ship and the shore, which as designed today do nothing but put pressure on the ship. We give them more and more technology, but we don't take away some of the paper burdens. We give them more and more technology, but we don't train them how to use it. We need to improve this ecosystem. We need to have a system, perhaps the way that the airline industry does, where they have a well-established air traffic control, where they have well-established communications pipes between the equipment manufacturers and back to base so that they can see the status of the equipment. And then there is a well-established communication pattern between the pilots and their office or the dispatcher but they run as completely separate systems. I can't see us getting to an automated ship until we have a global ship traffic control environment because I do not see an unmanned ship running from Athens through the Suez Canal to Singapore passing through multiple territories without some form of traffic control and some form of control 
because it would be like an unmanned missile basically passing through your waters. On to the other part of this, communications. If you're going to have a ship connected from ship to shore, you have to go through communication network. You have to pass from the ship to the shore, from the shore to the ship. Communications is, is going to become critical. And when, when I look at the scenario today, where if I look at an Ectus security, with an Ectus security, you build an Ectus, you put it on board. You build a radar, you put it on board. You build a GMDSS, you put it on board. You have gone through numerous resolutions, numerous standards. You've paid D DNV or one of the class societies $100,000 to certify your equipment. And if we just want to change the modem on our Ectus, we pay them another $100,000. Or if we want to just change the connection between the antenna and the radar unit, it's another $100,000. Yet, in today's communications world, none of that exists. None of that exists. We have an environment where we are talking about unmanned ships, where we are talking about connected ships, where we are talking about the new digital world. And yet we have an open infrastructure from the teleport to the communications equipment on board. There's no regulation that has to be signed off. There's no certification that has to be signed off. You have Iridium, you have multiple VSAT providers, you have Inmarsat. Perhaps the safest way to communicate today is through fleet broadband. Why? It's a closed, closed network inside Inmarsat. Now, there's a lot of people who will talk about not having a closed, a closed environment. But one way or the other, I don't see how we get to an unmanned ship unless we have the same level of control and regulatory environment over that pipe as we do over the rest of the systems on board the ship. These are just some of the weaknesses that exist within the communications infrastructure from ship to shore. Just touching on the last thing, the cyber missile. Nothing can take down an Ectus or nothing can take down a computer quicker than a human being. And when he's got a missile in his hand, he's deadly. And that missile is the USB. Now as we go forwards, we start talking about, we start talking about all these um, internet of things, we talk about all these systems, we talk about all these applications linked to the shipping industry. And ever, all of them work off positional data. Today, we all rely on AIS data. You think you know what AIS means. Well, I'm here today to tell you that AIS stands for attack, infiltrate, and spoof. Because you can attack the ship, you can infiltrate the ship, you can spoof the ship with AIS. It's way open. And I'm not saying that there are people sitting there waiting to do it. I have 500 software developers in St. Petersburg, Russia, so they're pretty good at hacking. But it is very easy to spoof AIS. So we have to find a better way to build an infrastructure of tracking ships. And if we are going to use that to rely on operating the industry, then I think you know, more, more security needs to be put in place. So just to close, and I can see I've done nine minutes, so that's pretty damn good. Um, I come back to if shipping, or rather asset management, is going to be de uh, digitized, I think it needs a rev revolution. After all, London black cabs did not invent Uber, and Hilton did not invent a Airbnb. So I actually question whether Transas or Imarsat or BMT or any of us can actually reinvent the industry. We have to, we have to try, obviously. But is it really possible for a current player to invent an unmanned ship or provide a ship traffic control environment or create a new ecosystem paradigm? Because people that come in and revolutionize have tended to come in from a completely different aspect 
and pr approach it from a completely different direction. If we're going to see a new model, I see one where possibly ships are owned by large financial institutions managed in huge managed centers, driven by a remote master sitting in, a, in the office and controlled by ship traffic control centers. It may need new technologies, it may need new communications, it may need new people and it may need new companies.